is LBC from Global, leading Britain's conversation with Nick Abbott. Hello. Well, let's get back to it. Spring has sprung and the hottest day of the year is expected to, to arrive tomorrow with the country set to enjoy a fine, dry and a sunny weekend for the most part. And I sincerely hope that it is going to be warm in your part. Saturday will see highs of 20 degrees centigrade in northwest Scotland. Wherever that is, temperatures will be lower in the south. What? In the south, temperatures will average 17 degrees centigrade with plenty of sunshine. And that sounds like it might be nice, but the only way to tell is to translate a European surrender centigrade to Her Majesty's Imperial Fahrenheit, as Jacob Rees-Mogg would prescribe. So let's see, doing mental arithmetic, you double it and add 32, so double 17 is 53. 53 plus 32 is, um, one, it's like a, 106. <gasps> wow, it's going to be 106 degrees Fahrenheit tomorrow. Can you believe that? No. Clear skies tonight will lead to dropping temperatures to around 42.8 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> F around 42.8 degrees Fahrenheit, you know, approximately. Not 42.9 or 42.7. It will be around 42.8. Correct. Sunday and Monday will see low pressure building with some showers in the east of the country on Sunday becoming heavier towards the south, east and the northwest of Scotland land. Yeah, I bet it will. Checking the weather for Glasgow while you wait. Aha! <laughs> <laughs> Huh? <laughs> Rubbish. <laughs> There's something wrong with my phone. It says here, in Glasgow, it's going to be sunny tomorrow and sunny on Sunday and sunny on Monday and sunny on Tuesday and sunny on Wednesday and sunny on Thursday and sunny on Friday. And then cloudy but dry on Saturday and Sunday and Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday. Nonsense. That phone's an idiot. Plus, people who live in Glasgow haven't got anything to wear in the sun. What are you going to do? <sighs> the brightness uh, will go away uh, down uh, 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 everywhere else. Not in Glasgow, apparently, but the brightness is going to go away because Monday will be cloudy. Damn it. But, and it's a huge dry wobbly but, the Met Office expects an area of high pressure to return on Tuesday, bringing sunshine and happiness. You remember happiness, don't you? No. <laughs> Can you remember back that far? H A P P Y N U S. Do you remember? The meteorologist uh, Met Office uh, spokesmodel said it's going to be largely fine and dry for everyone most days in the coming week. However, what? Uh, there's a however. Oh no! He said um, there has been warning of a pollen bomb about to hit Britain due to uh, high spring temperatures. But, you know, as we've all been expecting a nuclear bomb, I think we'll take it. The wall-to-wall -wall sunshine next week will spark a huge release of early pollen, uh, especially from trees, bursting into bud. It could see millions of people rushing to buy hay fever tablets and tissues. Panic by now, while they're still available. Some sufferers are already reporting runny noses, itchy eyes and headaches. Stop whining. Here's a fun fact. Hay fever symptoms tend to be uh, the worst around 11 in the morning and 6 in the evening because pollen at that time is at nose level. Pollen apparently starts off sitting on the grass at the beginning of the day and as the day warms up, the grass warms up and the pollen particles are shed and they rise into the air. At around 11 in the morning they are at nose level, 5 foot off the ground. This is a scientific fact. The pollen continues to rise with it sinking back down to nose level at about 6 p.m. Isn't that fascinating? No. So all you have to do is not breathe for an hour at 11 in the morning and 6 in the evening and you should be fine. And that is the official advice of LBC. Right, this evening, patchy low cloud and mist over Norn Island. Har, har, har. Otherwise, clear periods, a touch of frost, fog, patches, breezy. Saturday, dry, plenty of sunshine, warm in the west and the north, particularly the northwest of Scotland, if you, if you can believe that. Get it while it's here, because it's not going to be around very long. No, I wouldn't think so. 
Outlook for Sunday to Tuesday. Mostly fine and dry with sunny spells. Blimey. Would you like to hear the long-range forecast for the next four weeks? Um... Yeah, it's uh, like, mm, well, maybe. All right, this is for the end of the month, up until April the 1st. At first, dry and settled with prolonged, clear and sunny spells, feeling warm, and then dry and settled, especially for the south. Windy at times, rain in the northwest, temperatures likely to be above average. That's until the uh, 1st of April. And then, for the first two weeks of April, turning more unsettled during early April with showers or longer periods of rain. These showers are likely to be heavy at times. Thunder, lightning, very, very frightening. <coughs> Drier spells are likely to be more short-lived. Temperatures mo li most likely to be slightly below average. Huh. So we'll ignore that last part and we'll concentrate on the first part about the next two weeks. The last couple of weeks of March which you will recall are going to be are going to have a prolonged clear and sunny spells feeling warm with temperatures likely to be above average <gasps> prolonged clear and sunny spells feeling warm with temperatures likely to be above average we'll take it oh. right <sighs> have you heard there's something going on in ukraine well that's given the conservatives an opportunity to roll back wokery apparently Thank goodness for that, because that's what everybody's concentrating on. They're going to roll, roll, roll back Wokery and sweep away the fluff of Partygate. So said Jacob Me Smug. You're better informed than I am. I don't know anything. Uh, the minister for asking the public to tell him something good that's happened because of Brexit told a meeting of Tory activists that Vladimir Putin's invasion of Ukraine had created a new seriousness which made woke arguments about the use of language look like nonsense. Said the man who is a six-foot plank of bespectacled nonsense. He said the Conservatives should take advantage of the situation by taking a robust approach and refusing to accept the use of socialist vocabulary, like saying chair rather than chairman, or Beijing rather than Peking. Just when you thought this ghoul couldn't get any sillier after he started an inquiry into the return of imperial measurements as a Brexit bonus, he just did. First off, what's the Tories' obsession with the use of the word robust? Absolutely everything is robust to these people. I mean, they say robust more than they say dos vedania. And second, socialist vocabulary. Socialist. Is this bloke serious? No. Well, he's not a serious person. He's a silly person. He's a wilting pile of affectations and ticks. A sort of poor man's idea of what a posh person is like. Who gathers to himself vast riches and votes against the interests of the poor and the needy while spouting on about Jesus and how pious he is. You know, if the good Lord did actually come back to walk among us again, I'd say that people like him, who use religion as a weapon, would be right at the top of the Lord's to smite list. We see you, smug. So according to him, it's socialist to say chair rather than chairman. It's a retrograde step to acknowledge that the boss might be a woman, you know. Have you ever in your life heard anything more risible than this confected, dainty twiglet? However, due to uh, current circumstances, he said he was, was willing to say Ukraine rather than the Ukraine. The Ukraine implies it's a part of Russia. But he is willing, Smug, is willing to say Ukraine rather than the Ukraine in recognition of the bravery of the Ukrainian people. Yeah, I'm sure they're very appreciative. Thank you! That, that's him doing his bit. God! Our eye has been taken off the ball by that thing that's uh, going on, uh, you know, the end of the world. It, that, it, the end of the world will actually do that to you. There's a whole lot that's been going on all the while. And I'll get to much of it later. Painful. We are being taken advantage of. Bent over a desk saying, thank you, sir, may I have another? Socialist vocabulary. <laughs>
speaking at an event hosted by a Conservative Home website on the fringe of the Conservative Spring Conference in Blackpool, Smug said that the war had exposed the scandal over pandemic parties at Number 10 Downing Street as a trivial distraction from issues of real importance. <laughs> said the guy who's trying to bring back inches and feet. Pounds and ounces. Shillings and pence. Nice try, Smug. No sale. They were laws that your party brought in. The pandemic laws. And people were fined for ignoring them. People obeyed those laws. Even the blooming queen who sat alone at her husband's funeral and thousands could not see their loved ones before they died because of the laws that you brought in while all the time your party parted like it was 1999. Rock and roll! You do not get a pass because the bloke that's been funding your party went bananas and invaded a foreign country. Uh... No. And furthermore... No, 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 no. Your lot were guilty before, they're guilty now, and will continue to be guilty, and absolutely no one should let them off the hook. Just because this charmless sundial tells us that we're being silly for not forgetting about it. Smug said the Ukraine crisis was a reminder that the world is serious, and that there are serious things to be discussed, and serious and difficult decisions for politicians to take whether this is about reopening and having new licenses for oil wells in the North Sea, or whether it is about getting away from the wokery that has beset huge sections of society. That's what he said. OK, first off, keeping us reliant on oil and gas is playing right into Russia's hands. There's not enough oil or gas in the North Sea to last, and it will take ages to reopen wells, and fracking will take maybe decades, and anyone who says that we should be doubling down on fossil fuels is doing Vladimir Putin's work for him. And as for this made-up culture war nonsense about wokery that served the Tories so well for so long, it's your lot that keep that fire burning. If you just stop clutching your pearls to your chest in this fake Victorian fainting fit every time you're asked to consider the feelings of someone else, it wouldn't be such a thing. But you won't let it go, because it riles up your fans, who might otherwise spend their time wondering where all those benefits of the Brexit you sold them are, and why they're so poor when you told them they'd be so well off. Smug said, in the aftermath of Putin's invasion, nobody cares about rows over words which may offend people. Well, why are you bringing it up then, you dissembling hat stand? All that nonsense has shown up for the trivial nature of it, he said, and that we're now looking at serious, difficult decisions that have to be made. I would say the same about Partygate, he said. All of that has shown up for the disproportionate fluff of politics rather than something of fundamental seriousness about the safety of the world and the established global order. What is he talking about? We must forget anything that does not affect the established world order. So all those fines for breaking COVID rules will be paid back, and pretty much anyone in jail should be released immediately. Of course, the reverse should be true of any politician that's taking money from dodgy Russians and has allowed Vlad the Insaner to infiltrate British politics. That would be of fundamental seriousness about the safety of the world and the established global order. Smug said, when we look back in 36 years at Partygate, people will think, what were they on about? They were moving from Covid to Russia and Ukraine, Yet they were distracted by whether or not the PM spent five minutes in his own garden. It's fundamentally trivial, he said. And translated from the supercilious to English, that means that anything a Tory minister does is none of our business. And anyone who says otherwise will be dealt with under the new crime and sentencing bill. The Ukraine crisis meant that politics were recalibrated with a new seriousness, he said. And he said that this provided a job for Conservatives to do. A new seriousness. So here's what Mr New Seriousness said next. 
He said, as Conservatives, we've bought in over the last 20 years to socialist language. And that is a terrible mistake. We shouldn't do that, he said. We should definitely say chairman, not chairperson. We shouldn't allow the beginnings of woke language to feed in because when you begin to accept their argument, because then rather you begin to accept their argument. He said we should be, here it comes again, robust about how we use the language. If we just seed the ground, then wokery advances. But when serious things happen and wokery is in retreat, we should make these arguments, said Mr. New Seriousness. Despite saying he'd switched from the Ukraine to Ukraine in light of the crisis, Smug said he had no view on supermarket Sainsbury's decision to rename its Chicken Kiev Ready Meals Chicken Kiev. He said, Ugh, it's not a dish I would eat, he said. That dangerous stuff, garlic. <laughs> <laughs> garlic. He said, um, as I'm not going to eat it, I don't really mind what you call it. He said his own six children had, had avoided indoctrination with the woke terminology they heard at school. God. He said they get taught the normal politesse of the chattering classes, and they come, came home and say... They come home and say, this is all ridiculous, this is what we've been told, and it isn't funny at all. He said, it's absolutely fascinating how children are not perhaps quite as susceptible to indoctrination as we may think. Well, I think he's just proved that his own children seem to have been indoctrinated quite robustly by their ludicrous, phony, upper-class twit of a father. Please explain to me, people of North East Somerset, why you keep voting for this hollow, soulless, Taxidermid stick insect. Why? This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Call 0345 6060 973. Tweet at LBC. Text 84850. Anybody care what this guy thinks? No! Laura texts whenever my uh, MP, which is smug, is spotted in the village, someone posts about it in our village Facebook group. He looks like a fish out of water ne <laughs> next to the pound land on the high street. <laughs> and what is a pound land? Andrew emails all this talk of Armageddon, but don't worry, Arnold Schwarzenegger is on the case. Correct. All we can muster is Cameron <laughs> in his van driving to Poland. Haven't the people suffered enough? Yeah, we're still not missing you, by the way, uh, David Cameron, but um, we know where to find you when we do. You'll be in the shed where they keep the tools. I think this is nonsense. Mm. Yeah, that um, video that uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger did uh, was, um, I thought it was pretty good. Affirmative. I am talking to you. <laughs> I mean, he, he must be, what, like a, a hundred, 150 years old, and he still looks great. Still looks like somebody you wouldn't want to meet in an alleyway. I challenge you, Vladimir Putin, to a fight with uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Not a fight with, uh, you know, one of your lackeys that uh, just uh, rolls over as soon as you touch them. An actual real fight. Uh, Streatham. Hello, Robbie. Hi there. Yep. Robbie. Yeah, hi. Yes, Robbie, you sound surprised. You called me. Oh, no one told me that they were putting me on. Oh, That's right. we're putting you on. Oh, excellent, Nick. Thank you very much indeed. Look, uh, I was looking at this um, DP World. Oh, doing yeah. a bit of investigation on the internet for as much information as I can find. Yeah, doing your own research, yes. Yeah, that's correct. And um, basically, oh, I just noticed the DP... Less of the sniffing. Oh, sorry about Why that. Why in my yeah, ear? That was, that was in stereo. Disgusting. Awful. I'm hoping that I haven't got COVID, actually, at the moment. Right. well... But, uh, I, I think maybe, I think I might get it off you. Maybe it's just uh, maybe it's just hay fever. Uh, um, anyway, so anyway. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I think perhaps it's perhaps uh, I was in the air when it was at nose level. Yes, exactly. Don't breathe in uh, at eleven in the morning or six in the evening. The stuff you learn on this show, educational, ain't it? No. Go on. Well, I've got a mask. Actually, I might wear a mask instead. You know, yeah. a nuclear fallout mask. Right. So anyway, um, where are we? 
I noticed that DP World um, is doing a deal with um, some Russian oligarch. They're very, very close. To have a joint venture in in uh, a Russian port. Yes, Dubai apparently. and Russia, or the UAE in general, are um, like this, all hugger-mugger with uh, the Russians. Well, Vlad yeah, exactly. in particular, yeah. Their best I was buddies. wondering how, how much money, uh, oligarch money, is uh, invested in Tons. Uh, exactly. And I'm wondering if this DP World thing is uh, sort of like a, a political move and uh, to put pressure on uh, the workers in this country. Uh, I, well, I don't think they need to put pressure on the workers in this country because the, the government has done an excellent job for them. Well, I know. I know. It's just extra pressure, isn't it? Right. OK, <laughs> thanks a lot, Robbie. 0345 6060 973. I'll talk about that later. I have no idea whether there's any um, Russian oligarch money in uh, anything that that bloke just said, but there's, there certainly is UAE money all over Russia. They are allies, which I wouldn't be remotely surprised uh, might explain why that happened, the P&O firing happened, when uh, his imperial bodgeness was uh, over there begging them to uh, turn on the oil taps. Hey, Bodge? Yeah, 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 yeah. Where, 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 where do we... Laughing at you, they are. He was crawling across the carpet, begging them for, uh, you know, a, li a little extra squirt of oil. <laughs> and <laughs> meanwhile, they were concocting a story that would embarrass him hugely. You know, assuming that he actually was capable of embarrassment, which we all know is uh, not true. <sighs> what a way to run a country, eh? Dreadful. Laura texts, oh no, I've read that. That's Smug in the Village with Poundland. That sounds like, um, I don't know, that's, that, that sounds like an excellent name for, an, uh, for a band, doesn't it? Smug in the Village with Poundland. It actually sounds like a bad Beatles song. <laughs> Get Paul McCartney on the phone and he'll put it on his set list for Glastonbury. Sharon tweets, I wish Nick would get himself off that fence and tell us what he really thinks of Jacob Rees-Mogg. <laughs> I think he's beyond despicable. Those f that, that phony politeness that he uses as a weapon. And don't get me started on the religion bit. Look up his, uh, his voting record and ask yourself, is that what Jesus would do? And the answer is... No. And... No, 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 no. It's... Negative. And... No. Yeah. All of those things. No. Yeah. Definitely not. Oh, look at the time. Blimey, is that the time already? Don't it fly when you're out of your mind. 0345 6060 973. Text 84850. Email nick a at lbc.co.uk. And if you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at 10. Nick Abbott, LBC. It's 10.30. The news headlines with Serena Farrow. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Call 0345 6060 973. Tweet at LBC. Text 84850. Do not panic! Do not panic! We are trained professionals! 0345 6060 973. Gordon texted, Putin just had, Rutin Tutin shooting Putin had just have his equivalent of a MAGA rally in R Russia today. Yeah, he did, yes. Yeah, he did. I wonder where he got uh, that idea from, he said. Yeah, Donald Trump's very annoyed. I'd like to punch him in the face. Yeah, go ahead. Go right ahead, Donny. I'll actually, um, I'll, I'll pay a lot of money to see it. Edward texts, Nick, I'm not surprised that Smug defended Bodger today. Smug knows he will not be offered another job as prominent or as cushy on the payroll from any other PM as he has under this one. I think completely correct in every respect. I think that also applies to every single one of the other ministers in this catastrophic clown show that's running this country. All of them look like look at uh, Bodge with, uh, with doughy eyes they're like they're in love, L-U-V. Want to give him a great big kiss. Moi. Tell him that I love him. Tell him that I care. Tell him that I'll always be there. Rock and roll! The Shangri-Las. Let's get the best of the Shangri-Las on the show right now. We got the Shangri-Las? Hmm? <laughs> you see what I have to deal with? 0345 <sighs> Uh, right, let's have, um, York. Hello, Jan. Hello, Nick. Jan. How are you tonight? I am great, mate. Good. 
you know, you did a cracking job with your serious hat on, but um, it's fabulous to have you back to normal tonight. I am busting out all over like the month of June. Mm, it really is good. Did you enjoy it, though? But the serious part... Your serious hat, yeah. Um, I enjoy doing the... I enjoy that it's different, because uh, it really is, um, but I wish that it hadn't been quite so serious. Yeah, that's a shame, isn't it, really? It seems so long so, ago. I mean, I can remember doing that show when I I talked to this guy in... Uh, yeah, Reparisia, something like yeah, that. Yeah, when the nuclear plant was attacked, yeah. yeah. That night, yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, you were... St- Speechless, weren't you? I was, yeah. I've, I've rarely ever been speechless on the radio. I think that was the, yeah. the most speechless I've ever been. Um, yeah. If, if you didn't hear it, about half past ten, something like that, Reparisia, I think I've got that right, uh, this bloke, uh, an English guy who was staying there, called in, told us told us what was happening, he said something like, you know, we, we hear a gunfire, look like, away in the distance, uh, but it, they, they might be coming here. And, and then about two hours later, just before... I was going off the air, mm. in came this news that these morons were firing um, weaponry at the nuclear power station just down the road from where this guy was that I'd been uh, talking to. And yeah. um, I think I must have left such a long period of silence that I, I thought, oh, I better say something, because <laughs> if I don't, the emergency tape is going to kick in and it will be Steve Allen talking about biscuits. <laughs> 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 and then at the end of the show, you usually say, um, I'll be back tonight at 10, don't you? Yeah. And you didn't say it that night. Well, I wasn't sure. Well, I know, and I thought, oh, dear. And I, I drove home in a bit of a daze, really, mm. and um, I didn't think I'd get any sleep, but I did. I went straight to sleep, and I woke up the next morning, and, and I my first thing was to look out the window to see if the if there was, like, a, a an odd colour in the sky. See if we were, we were still alive, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh, dear. Yeah. Anyway, Jacob Reese Mogg. Anyway, yeah. If he um if he thinks we're all going to forget about Partygate as mm. he calls it. Right. I think he's mistaken, don't you? I do. Yeah, I blooming well hope so. The people of this country should not let these people get away with it. Well, certainly not. It, it, you know, I, oh, I mean I'm people have, people have already people have already stopped talking about unseating his bodgeness as though we we've all forgotten about that now. That there's mm. uh, that there's a war on. That, well, how can that forgotten. bloke be so lucky? Seriously, one yeah. thing after the next comes along and saves him. I, he's either he is either the devil or he's made a pact with him. Probably that, yeah. And aren't they all going to get a pay rise as well? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. That, uh, that yeah. is ridiculous. I think. Yeah, it's it's actually really? it's worse than that, and I'll come to that later. Really, a good. Yeah. Because right. uh, there's been an, a long period that's been excellent to very bad news, and they mm. have done just that. Mm. I Painful. know, they must, think we're all, they must think we're all balmy. Uh, I think they think that we're all gullible, and the reason they think that is because we are. We just keep falling for the same old lines over and over and over again. Like, oh, look, there's a dinghy just over there. <laughs> Vote Conservative. Mm, yeah. Well, I don't know. No, I don't know either, Jan. No. But it's painful. It is painful, very painful. Yeah. But anyway, it is great to have you back to normal tonight. Uh, okay, well... As I call it. Is this normal? <laughs> 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 All right, thanks a lot, Jan. All right. Cheers, my dear. Ta-da. 0345 Nigel emails, can you think of a group of people you'd like to fire and rehire? I can, although I might skip the rehire bit. Yes. Let's make a list. The pay rise. Well, I'll get to that later. I might explode if I talk about it now. But it's worse than the pay rise. They're not only giving themselves a pay rise. It's worse than that. But I'll get to that in a while. This P&O thing. You know, there was a, um, uh, a uh, as far as I'm aware, it was a Labour MP's, um, uh, uh, what do they call it, um, uh, private members bill that was put forward to ban the, uh, the employment practice of dismissing and then re-engaging on the worst contract. 
it was called the Employment and Trades Union Rights Bill of Dismissal and Re-Engagement. And it was chucked out. The nose to the left, or the right it would be, 249. The eyes to the left, 173. The guess which party threw it out. Go on, I'll, I'll, um, I'll, I'll give you a while. Go ahead, guess. <laughs> Correct Amundo. Every single person who voted no to protect workers' rights from being dismissed and then rehired on a worse contract, every single one that said no was a Tory. All of them. Not one single Tory said no. We do, um, uh, we want to respect uh, employment rights. And then they have the absolute gall to show up and, uh, and profess their uh, support with the uh, workers of, uh, that just got fired by P&O. I tell you, it's, it, uh, the, the, um, did you see the mail? Oh, didn't take long, did it? Headline, Union Mob Turns on MP. <laughs> Union mob. Yesterday it was, oh, these poor people. Now they're a union mob. It took less than 24 hours. Union mob turns on MP as angry P&O ferries uh, protests break out. Tory hating union members turned on Dover's Conservative MP Natalie Elphick. Y you know Conservative MP Natalie Elphick, don't you? No! Yeah, that's her. She came out to support them. I'm waggling my fingers in the air to denote inverted commas, to support them over the P&O Ferries Jobs Massacre of 800 uh, crews. It was revealed that... The, uh, OK, if you haven't heard, get ready, grip onto something firm. The government knew about the plan the day before. What? They knew about it the day before, uh, they didn't say anything about it, and they didn't do anything about it, and they haven't done anything about it now. Conservative MP Natalie Elphick even held a Save Britain's Ferries banner at the event. <laughs> wow, really putting yourself out there. <laughs> we appreciate the cooperation. Thank you. A banner. She held a banner at the event with Labour's hard left former shadow chancellor John MacDonald. Sounds like a communist to me. Amid calls for the Dubai-owned business to hand back their £10 million furlough cash. Yeah, that's your money. £10 million quid. £10 million pounds to furlough workers that they went ahead and fired anyway. We supported them with furlough and they should be backing Britain and backing Dover said, uh, I don't know whether it was Natalie Elphick or um, John MacDonald. Doesn't really matter. When she began speaking on TV, Dover's Conservative MP Natalie Elphick about the sackings being devastating for the Kent town. Union activists, you know, this mob, they started screaming, we hate Tories. Well, <laughs> with good reason. We are the Tory haters, they said. Now, you don't have to say both. Either say, we hate Tories, or we are the Tory haters. I mean, that's just saying the same thing twice. Shame on you, they said. You're on their side, they said. You voted for fire and rehire, and forcing her to abandon her interview. She said, right, right that's it, I'm going. Bye-bye. <laughs> One protester confronted her, saying, Tory anti-union laws allow bosses to get away with this. Natalie Elphick, the Conservative MP for Dover, said, Nonsense. It's bad business behaviour. And then she walked off. So, I checked. And, big surprise, Natalie Elphick did vote down a law that would have protected workers from fire and rehire. The one that I was just talking about, the Employment and Trades Union Rights Bill of uh, 2021, which was deliberately and specifically aimed at stopping this firing and then rehiring thing. Ch the, she was challenged, Tory anti-union laws allow bosses to get away with this. Her response was nonsense. She voted 
it out. In fact, every single one of the MPs that voted down that Labour Party private members bill was a Conservative. And finally, the message seems to have been getting through to the workers, because those workers are exactly the demographic that voted for the Conservatives at the last election. Are you beginning to get the feeling you've been had? Um... Think about it. 0345 6060 973 text 84850 email nick a at lbc.co.uk if you're on twitter it's at lbc friday saturday sunday night at 10 nick abbott lbc leading britain's conversation lbc with nick abbott 0345 6060 973 oh i forgot to do a thing hi honey how are you i'm super thanks for asking Ranjit texts, unfortunately all the crooked politicians around the world are growing in numbers and with the apathy from the voting public it will only increase. Can't pick a hole in that. Uh, let's have a call in Guildford. Hello Peter. Hello Nick, how are you? I'm great mate. Good. Um, I was just wondering, now that we send the oligarchs and we send our how stained the Tory party is with stained. Russian money. Oh. Yeah, well, we're infected, yeah, it was Russian money. Yeah. We're seeing the cost of living crisis. Mm -hmm. We're seeing... Uh, you, uh, oh, I've lost my train of thought. Oh, we're seeing no. the way the... Cre <laughs> we're seeing the way that um, the P&O workers are being treated. Yes. Uh, in a way that the Tory party wanted them to oh, be treated. Of course. What, do you think that the that the voters out there that voted Tory mm -hmm. will give them an even bigger majority at the next election? Yes, I do. Because they'll be so pleased. Yeah, I do. Because it seems to me that we're, the rich and powerful and those that own the right-wing newspapers mm -hmm. have done a terrific job. They've actually managed to persuade people who have nothing to vote for a party that supports the rich as against a party that wants to make their lives better. Amazing, they, but true. They see, uh, they see the trade unions as enemies. Mm -hmm. And they see business as somehow wonderful. You know, and then when something like this comes along, they say, hang on a minute, that don't seem right. And then you've got Tory ministers, Nick, that come out and, and they look absolutely disgusted with it all. <laughs> we're, we're, look, we're, although we voted to make it easier for people to hire and re fire and rehire, yeah, yeah. we didn't expect them to actually, actually do it. Actually do it? No, quite right. Yeah, that's what they're pretending at the moment. Yeah, they're they're um, they're, they're thinking, oh no, surely not, not under our watch. And um, I, I I guess they just wake up laughing because there's just enough people in this country who are still buying it to give them a stonking majority. Incredible. Yeah, I mean, the idea as well that that they're talking about, oh, let's forget what Bodger did with the parties and all that. Uh, you know, he's a war hero now. He's the next Winston Churchill, they think. <laughs> you know, and and we're supposed to forget all that. When yep. he broke the law, which it turned out he probably has, right. and people say, oh, well, you know, Never I mean, mind. he has been a great wartime leader. Yeah, that's right. It, it's, it's bizarre. It Can is you bizarre. imagine... Can you imagine Reese Mogg supporting the left wing of the Labour Party and saying, I want higher taxes on the rich. I want to really hit them hard. No, you'd never see that. But you see working class people on minimum wage and sometimes going to food banks who support the Tory party, who want to make their lives even harder. It's it's incredible. It's it, it is really weird that the demographic that votes that voted the Conservative Party in are the the poor old and the poor young. By a large margin, it's those that are the most in need voted for the party that's going to do the least for them. And the and the only explanation I can find is look a dinghy. <coughs> it's the <coughs> gift that keeps on giving. Yeah. repelling foreigners, which is why, of course, the government was so um, uh, f so lax about their response to the refugee crisis. It, it wasn't by accident. It, it wasn't a mistake. It's the plan. 
Well, they, they, that's, that's very true. They just point to, oh, there's foreigners coming over. Oh, oh, and, oh, watch out for them. They're the enemy, you know. And it is strange how they were so, like you said on another show, it's strange how they're so sort of reluctant to even let Ukrainian people over. You know, they, they put every hurdle imaginable. Yeah, it, it's not strange. It's, that, it's what they thought their fans would want because that is, after all, the, how they managed to cling mm. on to power all this time by making you fearful of others. They, they've managed to... Re they've been really clever. What were their friends in the right-wing press? They've been really clever in turning poor people against poor people. Yeah. And they support, they look at a billionaire and they don't say, well, there's a man there who's got too much. No one minds someone being rich, but when you're super, super, super rich and you're paying no tax, then questions should, but they don't look at it that way. They blame their neighbour. They, oh, they, oh. well, in a nutshell, we have been trained to blame those below us on the ladder mm. for the problems that we are experiencing rather than to direct the blame where it actually belongs to those above us on the ladder pushing us down. It's not the people below us on the ladder pulling us down, it's those above us pushing us down. Yeah, it is. And we fall for it all day. Every fall time. For it. Every, Every single, single time. time. Yeah, amazing. And it, it, it does make me think. Well, uh, I really do think. I, I heard once that Labour would need to win 100 seats or something in order to get a majority of one. I don't know whether that's right or not. But. If that's the case, then my God, we've got a hell of a job. It's worse than that because they're, they're, the Conservative Party seem to be actually engaging in what the Republican Party have done in America and making it more difficult for those who might not vote Conservative to actually show mm. up to vote in the first yeah, place. That's true. All of this ID stuff, mm. solving a problem that doesn't exist. How, how on, uh, what worries me is how on earth with even laws on protest now, yeah. how on earth do, <laughs> do people, yeah, how do we get our message across? They seem to have a lock on, on, on <laughs> a lock everything. lock on people's minds. Yeah, wake up, sheeple. It's later than you think. All right, thanks a lot, Peter. I know, it's galling, isn't it? The only way in which the system can become fairer is proportional representation. Over half of the votes cast in this country count for nothing. Zero. I mean, the Tories got, what, 44? Was it 46%? And that was of the people that could actually be bothered to go out and vote. I think it was a 70% turnout last time around, something like that. Which is remarkably high, apparently. Well done, everybody. <laughs> you managed to make it to 300 yards to the polling booth at the end of your road. Congratulations. Of course, 30% of us couldn't be bothered because, you know, oh, it's like so boring. I don't want to. Oh, they're all the same. You know, <laughs> all these stupid arguments that come out every time. The masses are asses. That's just a fact. It's almost as though they deserve what they get, but the rest of us don't. So the majority always get ignored under the system that we have at the moment, which suits the Conservative Party just fine, because the people that vote for them will crawl over broken glass to vote for them. And it is, and I'm sorry to have to say this, the old, old people are the problem. Pretty much everywhere you look, old people are the problem. How old is uh, Vlad the Insaner? I rest my face. Anyway, uh, Ashley says, Surely an employee is only redundant if their job no longer exists. If these jobs at P&O really no longer exist, what are all these agency workers going to do? Oh, no, you've blown my mind, Ashley. Uh, and Tom has texts, but imagine the alternative. Corbyn, that horrible commie who wanted to feed the children and get billionaires to give back a bit more. <laughs> I mean the cheek on this guy. Yeah, thank God that we, uh, you know, we we uh, didn't uh, suffer that. <sighs> what a way to run a country, eh? Dreadful. O three four five six zero six zero nine seven three. Text eight four eight five zero. Email nick a at lbc dot uk. 
And if you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. Um, well, things I want to talk about include, but are not limited to, a very strange uh, thing I found today about that P&O thing was um, an organisation that seemed to be, on the face of it, actually um, working towards that result. Now, I know that that's a bit vague, but I'll fill in the gaps for you. Um, there was also a pay rise issue for MPs, and like I said before, it's worse than that. <gasps> wow. Text just come in. Andy texts, Nick, you are an old people. What? <laughs> Offensive. Hello, boys. 0345 6060 973. Susan texts, the P&O workers should embrace their seafaring heritage, commit mutiny, and confiscate the ships until new and reasonable terms are agreed. Let the Tory backbenchers hand-wrangle about that. <laughs> hand-wrangle? I don't think I've heard that one before. Sounds awful. Disgusting. Uh, hands above the tables. Richie texts, Mog lives in Brideshead Revisited Land, where his teddy is more important than the normal person in the street. He wouldn't recognise a normal person in the street if his chauffeur drove over one. 0345 6060 973. Seriously, people of North Somerset, why do you keep voting for him? What is it about him that makes you keep voting for him? I'm, I'm really curious. I mean, it's not a wealthy place. I think it's that the, we Brits have been... Um, uh, been um, we've had it inculcated into us to be uh, deferential to those uh, what speak uh, posh, in it, uh, And then we all start doffing our caps, falling to the floor. Uh, I mean, and it's like an instinctual reaction, like Pavlov's dogs. Uh, and then we, we, we... Just whatever you say, your lordship. Uh. <laughs> It's so affected. Uh, all of that. Painful. But, you know, that's what we Brits like. We know our place. That is the basis of our society. Knowing our place. God bless you, Governor. <laughs> uh, Peter emails. Hey, Nick, have you seen the Facebook page for the Russian embassy in London? No. He says, you will be shocked at the propaganda posts. I replied to several posts, adding the video of the Russian TV protest. Not only did they delete all my comments, but they blocked me too. Why is Facebook allowing them to continue to post propaganda? Well, I don't know. I would look it up, Peter, but if I... I'm frightened of starting Facebook on my phone, because I, I know it'll just like infest my phone and... I'll get updates from people I don't know. Every three seconds, my phone will be bleeping at me. So um, I, I just don't open Facebook. It seems like a really simple thing, Facebook, but it's fiendishly complicated. I don't quite understand it. I mean, every now and again, once in a blue moon, I will post that, you know, I'm going to be on tonight or you can um, listen to my podcast. Oh, uh, you know what? I do a podcast with Karen McGiffin. Oh, right. Yeah. And I'll post that on Facebook. But I've, I, I never really know which bit to post it on, because I've got a ordinary Facebook page, like a lot of people have, which I never use, like ever. Um, and then I've got uh, a page page. Weirdly, they call a professional's page a page, I think. And I can't... I never know how to get to it. I don't know which bit to uh, post on. So I just start st stabbing randomly at bits of the screen. And eventually, after about five minutes, I find the place that I want. <laughs> it seems so simple, but it seems to be deliberately, fiendishly complicated. And they keep changing it all the time. It's like you go into a supermarket and you know where uh, everything is. You know, you know where the cake is and you know where the crisps are. And then every now and again, they just change it all around. <coughs> You don't know where anything is anymore. But you know me, I never complain. Whinging and whining and moaning. And, um... Yeah, I, so, uh... I, I, but I'm very, um... Um... 
uh, whatever the word is, about uh, opening Facebook on my phone. Very uh, nervous about it. Not quite the word I was after, but it will do in an emergency. I'm um, uh, trepidatious. There you go. <coughs> trepidatious about opening Facebook on my phone because I know it'll, it'll like, change all of my settings. My beautiful settings. So I won't do it. Uh, so I will just have to take your word for it, Peter, that the uh, Facebook page for the Russian Embassy in London is um, spouting propaganda. Can you, you believe that? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Why are you even looking at it? Are you um, taking up the fight yourself, Peter? Good for you. Every little helps. They blocked him for doing it. Well, I, I would be uh, quite concerned if I were you, mate. I, I'd move <laughs> under cover of darkness. And if a stranger offers you tea, don't take it. Let's have a call in Tottenham. Hello, Tom. What, Tottenham? Tottenham. Oh, I'm right here. Look, I've got to turn the speaker off. Uh, sorry. There you are. OK, I do beg your pardon. I ran off for a minute. I have to take care of a call of nature. But uh, you didn't oh, need to know that. A little bit too much information there. I right? know. I'm very sorry about that. Yeah, Look, okay, what about yeah. the Tory party? What about them? Uh, uh, well, what do the Tories want? Them in power all the time. I don't think they do. They want an opposition. The Telegraph was blasting on about that a few years ago. And uh, you were mentioning Corbyn, you know... The, wait, I didn't a minute, wait, 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 back up. The Telegraph Okay, was... yes, I'm being confused. The, you're being confused or confusing? I'm being confusing. You're being confusing or... Because if you were being confused, that would imply that I am confusing you. I got the right idea or, of what I was rambling on about, but I'm, I'm not being concise, which I was trying to be. <laughs> well, ask me a question. <laughs> I think there. Look, when you close look, your I, eyes, I think there are when you Tories. close your eyes, Tom, what colour do you see? Do you do you see like paisley shapes, or um, like a pyramid with an eye on top of it, something like that? Groovy. I'm afraid I've had telephonic problems. Right. Well, that's um, that is a matter for you. Have I lost you altogether? No, I'm still with you. And I need you so badly. You're dropping breadcrumbs behind you. I can follow you so far. Go ahead. That shut him up. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead, Tom. Speak to me. He's gone. Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. In a nutshell, he said... <laughs> Phil says, Did you notice how the UK government slipped out the small, inconsequential fact that HS2 needs another £900 million? <laughs> Can't or won't feed the hungry children, just like uh, Jesus, but they've got money for a new train set, says Phil. I did not see that. HS2 needs another £900 million. What? Not a billion, mind. Very specifically, £900 million. So if they say it needs another 900 million, then that'll be an, another 1.8 billion, won't it? I mean, that's how these things work. That is just basic maths. Affirmative. What for? It's going to be 10 years late and 10 times the original stated price, and it won't work. We know that that's true. And it will be ancient technology by the time they build it. And which country are we getting, those, are we, are we getting to build it, by the way? It's not China, is it? Oh, no. Who's providing the uh, the railway carriages? Is it China? If only this was TV, you'd, I'd go into a sort of weird thing every time I do that. Um, I can't help it. I, I do a Donald Trump thing. It's, it's, there's a lot of it in the hands. China. But not television, though. Simon says... Nick, is this out of touch or plain trolling? Johnson does a speech about protecting democracy and Car Cameron is volunteering for a charity which helps feed the poor. Wow, says Simon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I think that's uh, maximum gaslighting. We're, we're up to gas, um, gas mark five now. And the, the worrying thing is we can't afford that. Concert, County Durham. Hello, Sean. Hello, mate. How are you doing? Great, mate. I've got a, quick, a couple of quick points for you, right? So that uh, Putin done a Trump the day, like, maybe this is his last farewell. Well, wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't that be nice? 
I wouldn't have just... Yeah, don't let the door hit you on the way out. Bye-bye. <laughs> I was watching the Sky News the day there, and half the Johnson was on the television mm -hmm. making a fool of himself. What was he doing now? Sky, and Sky News cut him off, and they never went back to him when he was live talking. Like. <laughs> really? <laughs> Good for them. I thought, it was, I thought it was fantastic of Sky News cutting him off. Yeah, like. yeah, they, yeah they, they just said... Boring! And then went to the ads, yeah. Well, I definitely think, I definitely think this, is, this is Putin's last... Uh, uh, I think it's his last farewell on Earth, I think. Right. So he was singing today on stage, wasn't he? Maybe he's auditioning for the X Factor. <laughs> Too late, Vlad. They've cancelled it. <laughs> but uh, I, I honestly think the bloke has lost his mind. Like I, I definitely think, I, th I definitely think he's got a disease. Like, well, he might have a disease. He might. He, he, do, he looks a bit puffy in the face. So, he, but I don't know about the losing his mind part any more than he had already lost his mind. I mean. If you're a psychopath, does that mean that you've actually lost your mind? Or, or are you thinking rationally to achieve the ends that you are after? Because that... Well, they were saying, they were saying in the paper there that he had uh, taken tablets for certain things and cancer and things like that. Maybe he has. Maybe he has and maybe he is losing his mind. What galls me is there's six billion people on this planet. Six, not million... Billion, six uh -huh. billion people, every single one of us is being put at peril uh, and, uh, uh, and at, at a minimum, a massive economic disadvantage by one bloke. One! I've just seen it on the news there before there that all the dead bodies that are lying on the floor in streets over in Ukraine, right? How can the world sit back and watch this, like... Well, like I said, one bloke. Well, they need to wipe them out as soon as possible, I think. ASAP, yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe that's what uh, David Cameron is, like, his, his, his secret mission. <laughs> 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 maybe he's um, he's got a, a pie van loaded up with high cholesterol products and he's uh, planning on, uh, you know, force-feeding them. <laughs> Breakfast, lunch and dinner. Exactly. All right. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Sean. Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. Sanj texts. Hi, Nick. When we were in the EU, we had workers' rights. Since then, the RMT have been popping up, protesting with the P and O workers. Yet, if you look on their website, they ask their members to vote leave to secure their jobs and get better pay, as Europeans were bringing down their wages and living standards. Sanj, you are. It's, it's like you're psychic, because I have detailed files. He says, the government are a bunch of hypocrites. They voted against workers' rights. Why, oh, why do the people who have the least keep voting them in? That's an excellent question. Um, that uh, Sue, uh, what's her name, who writes for The Guardian, was asking this. And I was just trying to look up the column because I, I, didn't, um, I didn't bring it with me. But I did read it. It was, uh, what's her name? You know, that, the, the woman from The Thing. <laughs> Am I being specific enough? I can't remember what her name is. She's a very famous uh, writer in The Guardian. I mean, anyway, a, a column was about why do old people keep voting for the Conservative Party? Over and over and over again, they get shafted and they keep voting for the same blooming party that, uh, that uh, did it to them the last time. Again and again and again and again and again. Like I said before, wake up, sheeple. It's later than you think. It's mystifying. Look at the demographics. For the people who voted for the Conservative Party last time round, the poor and the old. It's amazing. It's the opposite to what you would think. You'd think it would be the rich. No. Incorrect. The poor and the old overwhelmingly voted Conservative. Why? Perhaps it's because the last 11 years of a Labour government under the disastrous premiership of Jeremy Corbyn. Oh, no, that's right. It wasn't him. Explain it to me, I double dare you. It's mystifying. Other than... There's a dinghy. I mean, is, is that it? Is that really it? We're about to have a tsunami of foreigners vote Conservative? 
I can't think of anything else. Can you? 0345-6060-973. Text 84850. Email nick a at lbc.co.uk. If you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at 10. Nick Abbott, LBC. Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345-6060-973. I think he's betraying a quite stupefying ignorance. Right, here's that um, RMT story. Transport Union RMT. This is 2016 before the uh, ew referendum. Transport Union RMT today set out six... Oh, I don't know why I'm doing it in that accent. Set out six key reasons why it will be advising members to vote to leave the European Union in the forthcoming referendum. You ready? So this is the RMT, the very union that represents these people that have just been fired by P&O. Before the referendum, they were advising their members to vote to leave the EU. Now, before I get into that, there is a little bit of a background. This was in the, the New Statesman by Anoush Chakilian. I've got no idea who that is, but they are excellent in every regard, I'm sure. Anoush Chakilian says, leaving the European Union, Brexiters argued that it would mean an end to importing low-cost European labour that undercut British workers. You remember that? An end to low-cost European labour undercutting British workers. How's that going, by the way? Oh, fabulous. But the P&O mass layoff exposes this argument as a red herring. The problem was not freedom of movement, but a loosely regulated labour market and poorly enforced labour laws, particularly relating to agency work and bogus self-employment. Time and again, she said, is that a she? It. <laughs> Offensive. Anoush says, time and again, I've come across unscrupulous employers outsourcing work to agencies that pay lower wages and allow fewer rights to their workers than permanent employees receive. From hotel maids, office cleaners, uh, carers working under shoddy agency conditions to gig economy workers like uh, drivers and couriers fighting for labour rights. I have reported on the many cracks and grey areas of UK employment rights over the years. Well, cracks implies that it's, a, a, it's an error, it's a mistake. Not a mistake, it's the plan. Anoush says they existed before Brexit, now it looks like they will persist after it, despite Bodger Johnson's promise of a high-wage, high-skill economy. <laughs> yeah, right, that's what it'll be. High-wage, high-skill. Uh, Anoush says, indeed, the owners of P&O Ferries, a Dubai-based multinational called DP World, are also a major investor in the first post-Brexit free port. That was another uh, thing that they sold to us. Oh, we'll be able to have these free ports now we leave the European Union. They're fantastic. They'll be great. <laughs> Forgetting about the part that you can already... Uh, countries in the European Union can already have free ports. Indeed, we had about half a dozen of them. Uh, ourselves already and we uh, shut them down because they weren't really working another lie on a giant pyramid of lies still never mind and and, and if you think that um, workers rights are bad out you know in uh, this country as it is try getting a job in a free port call me back and tell me uh, how it's going for you Anoush says, if staff can be laid off by multinationals like this while agency workers, whether from the UK, Europe or beyond, can be made to fill in on the cheap, then Brexit has failed on its own terms. Well, that implies that what the terms that were sold to us in order to persuade us to vote Brexit were uh, actually true, but I don't think that they were. I think Brexit has succeeded on its terms, which were to make a vanishingly few number of people fabulously rich. They woke up with gold in their mouths, you remember? She said, she, he, Anoush says, a dull technical slog that involved catching the UK's labour laws up with modern working practices, beefing up its enforcement agencies and empowering trade unions would have helped keep these ravages of globalisation in check. But there's no handy three-word slogan like, get Brexit done for that. Correct. So here's what the RMT advised. Their members... One, leave the EU to end a tax on rail workers. New EU rail policies, they said, are set to further entrench rail privatisation and fragmentation. That will also mean more attacks on jobs and conditions and EU laws will make it impossible to bring all of rail back into public ownership. Well, that's odd, because practically every country in the EU has state-owned railways. 
Two, leave the EU and end attacks on seafarers and offshore workers. <laughs> How's that going? Dreadful. Three, leave the EU to end attacks on workers' rights. Well, I refer you to the question that I just posed some moments ago. Leave the EU to stop the attack on our NHS. <laughs> and leave the EU to support democracy. Well, not if Vladimir Putin has got anything to do with it. Honestly, is there a document that has aged worse than this one? This is the actual RMT telling their members reasons why they should vote to leave the European Union. It says that RMT will be promoting the six key points direct to members across all sectors of the transport industry through the union's uh, uh, news and branches and reps and etc. and so on. RMT is proud to stand up for the tradition of progressive and socialist opposition to the European Union, an organisation wedded to privatisation, austerity and attacking democracy. The European Union, not the Conservative Party, privatisation, austerity and attacking democracy, they said vote with the Conservative Party against the EU. I mean, it could have been written by Jacob Rees-Mogg. What were they talking about? And so I thought, I wonder what other uh, organisations were uh, thinking about it at the time. And I looked up what the TUC were saying. And it's the absolute, total and complete opposite of what the RMC was, uh, uh, RMT was saying. The TUC released a paper in 2016 which, said, which was called UK Employment Rights and the EU. Assessment of the Impact of Membership of the European Union. It's a um, couple of minutes long. Can you stand it? Since the mid-1970s, the European Union has played an important role in protecting working people from exploitation and combating discrimination, says the TUC. These EU rights have provided an important counterbalance against pressure for the UK to adopt a US-style hire and fire culture where there is an absence of statutory employment rights. Well, I'll just take a breather there for that to sink in. This was in uh, 2016. EU rights. An important counterbalance against the pressure for the UK to adopt a US-style hire and fire culture. Are ringing any bells? It said the, e the EU has adopted a diverse range of treaty provisions and directives which provide important employment protections, has the EU done. They've safeguarded health and safety, promoted equality in the workplace. In some areas where the EU has legislated the UK already had laws in place such as equal pay, maternity rights, sex, disability, race discrimination and health and safety. Even so, EU action in these areas has improved and extended rights and now underpins them, making it more difficult for the UK government to undermine them unilaterally. Unless, of course, we're not in the European Union anymore. The TUC said, in other areas, the UK had to legislate for the first time in response to EU requirements. In some cases, laws that resulted directly from EU directives are now well accepted. For example, around sexual orientation, age, religion, or belief discrimination. But other rights would have been difficult to, sec to secure in the UK and would still be particularly vulnerable to attack if the UK were to vote to leave the EU. For example, UK government strongly resisted equal treatments rights for agency workers, working time limits and rights for workers to receive information and be consulted on changes in their workplace that could affect their jobs or terms and conditions. Bells are ringing. As well as improving standards in EU member states, EU employment law has sought to create a level playing field so that workers' rights in one member state are not undermined by lower levels of protection in another. In the absence of these safeguards, it's likely that the single market would have resulted in a race to the bottom, with countries seeking to compete against each other on the basis of lower pay and reduce employment protections for workers. That's Singapore on Thames thing. Conclusion. The overall contribution of EU employment rights to the UK workforce is substantial. The gains UK workers achieve as a result of our membership of the EU include improved access to paid annual holidays, 
improved health and safety provision, rights to unpaid paternal leave, rights to time off work for urgent family reasons, equal treatment rights for part-time, fixed-term and agency workers, rights for outsourced workers, information and consultation and significant health and safety protection. Given these benefits, we conclude that EU membership con continues to deliver wide-ranging protections to UK workers. Furthermore, evidence also suggests that in the years ahead, Remaining in the European Union may provide significant opportunities to extend employment protections for working people. The same people who voted to leave the European Union. Because, look, a dinghy! 0345 6060 973. Text 84850. Email nick a at lbc.co.uk. And if you're on Twitter, it's at lbc. It's 11.30 on LBC, the news headlines, with Serena Farrow. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. 0345 973 Barry texts, I'm... Uh, Hi, Nick, he says, I'm a traditional Tory supporter. If you can convince me that Diane Abbott, Mr Lammy and Emily Thornberry would be good custodians of our country, then I will eat my hat, says Barry. Barry, I'm not remotely interested in doing anything of the sort. And um, couldn't care less whether you eat your hat or not. Continue to believe what the offshore billionaire press barons tell you to believe. And I hope you're very happy. Uh, let's have... Now, let's see who's been waiting the longest. I'll be totally fair about this. Hull. Hello, Charles. Oh, hi. Hi, Nick. Thanks for letting me on your show. I'll be very brief this time. Um, yes, yeah, see, uh, by Christmas this year... Um, the United Kingdom people will be poorer. Yes. The entire nation not, will be no, poorer. Not, not the entire nation. One little yes. segment, and that's the members of Parliament. Correct. But most specifically, Boris Johnson and Rishi Sunak. Do you know why? Ah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm on, I'm on, I'm hanging off my seat. On the edge of your, <laughs> on the edge of the precipice of expectation. Absolutely. The PM and the Chancellor have the lowest council tax in the country and will not face higher energy bills. Boris Johnson and oh. Rishi Sunak enjoy the lowest council tax charges in the country. The PM and the Chancellor pay the levy at their Grace and Favour residences, uh, number 11 and 10. But council tax in Westminster is the lowest in England. A banned <laughs> D property is liable. This is their full year's council tax, eight hundred and twenty-seven pounds. What? Uh, what? Uh, yeah, a similar, uh, a similarly expensive uh, property in uh, Nottingham, four thousand four hundred and fifty-one. Wow. Yeah. I mean, the north. I mean, uh, you know, because Hull's part of the North, we speak as we find, thou knows. But, I mean, it's just going to be ridiculous by Christmas with all these energy prices. Yeah. But they, they also won't be suffering from that either, of course, because they are oh. liable for what is called a benefit in kind, which covers their heating and utilities at their flats in which they live rent-free. So <laughs> they'll be just <laughs> fine. Don't you worry about that, Charles. Oh, well, 